Hello everybody, my name is Michael and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks interesting to you, please carry on and watch the video. And also, just one more thing before we go. Please, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. But with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so one good thing with these WizKids miniatures here is they're already pre-primed, so we can miss out on priming that step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them both up here in the same paint scheme, and I'll just switch between any of them depending on what needs we have on each of the different models. And as you can see here, I'm starting off with a nice base tone of green skin here because I'm going with a nice traditional, easy, sort of green skin bullywogs that you see in the monster manual just trying to keep it nice and simple here for you guys to follow along and of course like i said since we're doing this as our base coat it's just a matter of laying it down everywhere we can see our bullywog skin Okay, so now that we have our base skin tone down, what we're going to do is come in with some goblin green, which is an even lighter green, and we're going to be using this as our highlight. So, to do our highlights here, all I'm going to be doing is looking carefully around our bullywog here, and picking out the areas where the sun would naturally hit any raised areas, very similar to just painting up skin on a human, except for we're just accentuating all of those frog features. And like you can see here that I have those pronounced lips, I'm picking those out as well as the tops of the muscles, anywhere where the light would naturally hit. Then once we have those highlighted areas picked out, what we're going to be doing is coming in with a wash. And we're going to be using Cassandor Yellow for this, which is a yellow wash rather than a green wash, which is going to change all these colours pretty dramatically and really pop out the colours that we've already used on here. And will actually accentuate the highlights we did in our previous step, even though they're very, very subtle with the greens right next to each other. Once we apply our wash here, it'll pop them out a lot more. So it gives a uh, overall nicer effect and you can really see where those highlights come into play as well as that giving that yellow uh, tone towards it really makes it stand out as a completely different piece on the table as you can see by just applying this yellow wash we've got a completely drastic color change and it looks a lot more interesting than if we were to go with a green wash we meant to be Okay, so then once our wash is completely dry, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be coming back in with our highlight colour, which was Goblin Green, and I'm just going to be touching up some of those highlights again, giving them more uh, green tone back in there, rather than the yellow wash we've just applied there. Totally up to you if you want to do this extra step here, but I always wanted to add in some brighter highlights, and you can see it sticks out a lot more now, since we had that wash go over top and make them more subtle, and now we can bring them back in some areas to give those more extreme highlights, just in the certain points. I'm not doing it as much as we did our highlighting step, I'm just doing it inside those areas, so we've got those natural, really high points of strong colour. Okay, so now we have the skin complete, what I'm going to be doing now is coming in with some flat yellow, and I'm going to be using this for our Bullywog's eyes, I'm going to have some nice bright yellow eyes, really stand out on the table so you can really see them especially from a distance and like I'm doing here I'll switch to a finer tip brush even though you can't see because my camera's out of focus sorry about that hopefully I'll get that into focus a bit better I'm using a new camera here and getting used to uh, how it focuses and how far away I'm going to be painting from the camera so bear with me as I learn this new camera while I'm making these videos but as you can see it's just coming in with a very fine tip brush and then picking out those eyes very very carefully Then once we're painted in those eyes, time for the very scary step of course of putting in those pupils and making sure that we're not looking off in any crazy directions, although I guess it's a little bit more um, acceptable with the frog I guess because it's got a bit more range of motion, but I want to try and get those as nice as possible. And as you can see too, I've also switched to an even finer brush to dot in those eyes, being very very careful. But don't be afraid if it takes more than one or two tries to get it right. Just wait for it to completely dry and then come back with that original eye colour to paint them back in. 
Then once we have those eyes painted in, what we're going to do now is coming in with some cavalry brown, which is a reddish brown, and I'm going to be using this for the main overall clothing of our bully wogs here. So as you can see, being that reddish brown is really contrasting really nicely off the top of those ye that yellow wash and the green colour we have here, really making it a strong standout piece. And of course, like I said, well, this is our base colour for our clothing, so it's just a matter of going around, being very careful not to get over anywhere that we don't want it to, especially since we have our skin completed. So just take your time here and give it a nice overall colour. Then once we're given that a base colour, what we're going to do now is come in with some hemp rope, which is a sort of yellowy-ish, greenish colour, as, as implies the colour, rough colour of hemp rope. And I'm going to be using this for our Bullywog's belt here that he's using to hold his clothing together. And as you can see with that colour, it's really contrasting really nicely off of our uh, clothing colour as well. So we can see that those pieces are nice and stand out-ish. And as well as that too, he also has like a little bit of uh, side plating on him himself. So I'm guessing it's a little bit like scrap armour he's tied to himself. So I'm just avoiding that little triangle piece of uh, metal that he's got there. And I'm just focusing on the rope itself. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is come in with some orange brown. And we're going to be using this for painting up the wrist straps he has, sort of his uh, gauntlet of homemade armour he's got here, which is basically just some wrapped leather or linen that he's got around here. We're just going to be going through and picking out that, making sure we give it a nice good overall coverage. Then with that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some deck tan. And I'm going to be using this in a very precise way here. I'm going to be using it for the necklace he's wearing. As you can see, I've switched to a finer tip brush again, even though it's completely out of focus. Hopefully it'll come back into focus as I'm painting this here. And it's a very, very fine line for the necklace here. So make sure, like I said, you get to that finer tip brush and really just sort of pass over the top of it using the edge of the tip of your brush, not the actual tip itself. It has more chance to accidentally veer off in another direction whereas if you're using the side it can uh, make it a little bit easier to pick out some of those finer details. Then once we have that necklace painted up what I'm going to be doing now is coming in with some skeleton bone and I'm going to be using this for the bone slash teeth he has around his necklace. Just um, you may want to add some crazy colors here some whatever sort of adornment color you feel like would give it a bit of pop with some traditional teeth slash bones that he's going to be using here. So totally up to you what you want to do here. And as you can see, it's also out of focus, so you can't see me doing it properly, but I'm also using that same fine tip brush to do this. Then once we have those areas picked out, we're going to come in now with some mahogany brown. And what we're going to be doing for this is we're going to be using it for the spear that our Bullywog is holding. Now, the other Bullywog has a sword on it, so when we come to the metallics, I'll show off that Bullywog there. Um, so you can see what I'm doing here, but as this one has a homemade sort of spear, we just want to be painting that handle there with our mahogany brown. And just another quick little step here, what you want to do is grab a grey, I've gone with dark sea grey for this, and you just want to paint the end of that spear. I'm going to be using grey, uh, like I said, because I want it to be a handmade stone uh, spear rather than any metallic here, but you could totally go with metallic if you wanted to here But I just wanted to make it stone more primitive technology Okay, and like I said when we we're doing that spear that we're going to do some metallics as well here And I'm just going to use some gun metal to do this and you can see I've switched to the other bullywog because he has a nice big sword on him as well So a bit easier to show off the metallic usage here. So we want to be painting that sword uh, with our metallic color as well as that like i said when we're doing the belts they have sort of like this bit of scrap metal tied around their waist as sort of a little bit of armor so we want to be picking that out as well giving it a good overall coating especially since it's uh, big and flat and this bullywog here actually has one on each side uh, so don't forget to pick out both of them here as well since it's sort of cobbled together this little bit of armor and it's just a matter of giving a nice smooth overall coat so do two coats if you need to here because uh, as you can see with my one here it's been a little bit grainy so I want to give two coats to make sure that's nice and smooth. Okay so then once we have that metal complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some khaki and what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be using this as the base color for our shield. 
Now when I seen these shields that they're using here, it automatically reminded me of the Zulu Warrior shields here. So that's what I want to paint them up like, give them a sort of nice, unique uh, visual thing to look at on the table and go, wow, that's a little bit different when you see it on the table. So like I said, the automatic thing inspired me. They're very similar in uh, design. So I wanted to try and show that off here, especially as well, it works well since Zulu shields were made out of uh, uh, hides of animals and stuff here it makes sense that these guys would uh, naturally find bits of leather and animal hide to make weapons so it's going to be a nice theming part to the miniatures themselves and tell a little bit of the story Then once we have the base color of the shield complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown wash. So any brown wash will do here. I'm going with Agrax Earthshade. And we want to apply this to basically all the areas we've just painted, uh, right up until the skin, essentially, with our polywogs. So that's our clothing, our rope, even our metal, uh, the stone spear we've got here. We want to give everything a nice, good overall brown wash because I want to make it... Yeah, you know they cobble together and make their own armor out of whatever they have available and of course they're frogs who sort of live in ponds and water so their stuff is naturally going to be sort of dirty and not well, really well maintained so going with an overall brown wash and just to dull everything down and give it that brown tinge making it look a little bit dirty because they're not keeping everything completely clean so it's going to be uh, theming part as well as that too. You might even want to put two or three layers of our brown wash here. I'm just going to be applying one, just giving it a simple base uh, color um, dilution and giving it that brown tint. But if you wanted to sort of grind me them up a bit more, adding those few extra layers would really help out and give the overall look of them coming emerging from a swamp. Then once we have our brown wash completely dry, all I'm going to do is come back in with a cavalry brown here and I'm just going to be giving some highlights back to the areas where the sun would naturally hit on the clothing. Since it's a nice big prominent area, I want to bring some of those highlights back. Like I said, um, I wasn't going for as entirely dirty as what you could do here. Um, just dirty it down enough to make it look like they're, they don't keep them very well clean or anything like that. But we still want to add in those highlights to give that uh, visual pop from a distance on the table. And while we're also doing some highlighting, I also want to come back in with our skeleton bone here and pick out the teeth that we have along the necklace or the bone, whatever you decided to paint them up here. Just give them a bit of highlight color and really make them show off. And as you can see, I'm still learning out the trick to this camera and getting the focus, especially when coming in on very fine detailed work areas. So hopefully I'll get better in the future guys, but you just have to bear with me for now. Then once we have that complete, time to complete that shield and really make it look like a Zulu warrior shield. So what I'm going to do is come in with some ivory now and I'm going to come through and give it some random sort of splotching. So I'm sort of basing this off a, a cow hide here. Now like I said, uh, Zulu warriors use a lot of different uh, styles and uh, different types of hides to make their armor. So you could totally uh, use what you wanted to here. I'm just going with sort of like it's a, a cow hide that this thing has picked off from a uh, local village and maybe it's even a quest idea something like that but you can visually see that where they've gotten their inspiration from and of course like I said it's going to make a really nice eye-catching piece on the table from a distance it's something really unique rather than if we were just to leave it how it was here I wanted to add that sort of visual impact to the And then once I've done that, what I'm going to do now is come in with some matte black. And what I'm going to be doing is applying some little uh, black lines across the, basically the center of the um, shield itself. Um, a lot of the Zulu shields seem to have this. I'm not sure if it's the area where they attach to the actual shaft of the shield that they're holding or if it's sort of a visual design element. I'm not an expert on Zulu shields or anything like that but I must say their aesthetic look really really cool and I want to mimic that and so I want to add these little black lines in there to also give that extra layer and impact to the piece. So just a matter of coming in and picking out those and I noticed that a lot of them sort of seem to have uh, six on the top and six on the bottom of the shield so that's what I'm trying to mimic here. And then once you've done that that is your miniature complete so it's time to just base it however you'd like. So let's move on to those glamour shots and see how they came out.
And with all that complete, we have finally finished paying up some bullywogs from the Dungeons and Dragons range by WizKids. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video as an inspiration and painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.